For week nine, we'll explore hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing just being another kind of inferential statistics that we'll explore, kind of like confidence intervals were in the past couple of weeks. For part one, let's just go over um, some basic introduction to hypothesis testing. We'll start off with a hypothetical example and just explain where hypothesis testing is coming from. Okay, so what is hypothesis testing? Um, just for example, suppose that I'm invited to play a game at a carnival and I'm being told that there's nine red marbles and one white marble in this container. And the guy's like, you know what? You have a pretty face. I'm going to be nice to you. If you pull out any one of those red marbles, you're going to win a dollar. And if you pull out a white marble, remember, there's only one white marble in the whole container, you're going to lose a dollar. So this sounds like a great game. I'm definitely going to play it. Remember, nine out of ten chance that I'm going to win this game. So I play and I pull out a white marble. So I lose the game, I lose a dollar, but you know, that happens. Um, I was just unlucky. I mean, you know, surely I can't pull out a white marble again twice in a row, right? So I'm like, you know what, I'll play again. That sounds like fun. So I put the white marble back, I play again, and I happen to pull out that white marble again. Wow, I am super unlucky. You know what, I'm gonna play this game again. And sure enough, I play the game again. I'm down $2 already, I play it one more time. And again, I pull out a white marble. Okay, I'm starting to get a little suspicious. Am I really that unlucky? Um, what would you do if you were me in this situation? Okay, if if you think about it, if you were me, you'd probably want to check. <laughs> Are there really only, is there really only one white marble in this container? I'm starting to get a little suspicious. So sure enough, that's what I'll do. Okay, emptying out the container. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, those are my sound effects. Look at that. They're all white. So this guy's a thief. Um, <laughs> okay, so what made us this suspicious? What made us think that this uh, carnival worker was cheating me? Um, well, let's go through the calculation. There's only supposed to be a 10% chance of me losing the game if the person was telling the truth. And if I'm doing this three times, that's 10% times 10% times 10% which is going to be 0 0.001 or a tenth of a percent, or in other words, a one in 1,000 chance of me losing three times in a row. So that's what's making me suspicious, is that if this person was telling me the truth, it would be very, very unlikely for me to have lost three times in a row. So that's what made me suspicious of that original claim, the claim being that there's only one white marble in this container. And that's what we're doing when we do hypothesis testing. If we find out that some event isn't very likely to occur, if the original claim is true, then we'll say the original claim is most likely wrong. All right, um, so let's go over some basic vocabulary. A hypothesis um, is a statement about the numerical value of a population parameter. And there are two types of hypotheses, hypotheses just being the plural of hypothesis. There is the null hypothesis, which is written H subscript zero, zero just being null. And this is the default state or the default hypothesis, um, also called the status quo. In other words, if we fail to disprove it, we'll act as if it was true. In other words, we need a lot of evidence to disprove the status quo. We're not going to contradict it if we're not going to contradict the status quo or put our you know, reputations on the line unless we find sufficient evidence to disprove it. The alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis we'll accept if the data provides us with convincing evidence to contradict that null hypothesis. Um, often this is a hypothesis the, uh, the researcher is trying or attempting to prove. So maybe the researcher says, here's the default state, here's the null hypothesis, we believe something else, what we believe is the alternative hypothesis, let's try to prove the alternative and disprove the null. And that's usually your goal with hypothesis testing. Okay, um, we actually use hypothesis testing pretty regularly. Um, one example is actually something that you're probably familiar with. It's how our justice system works, actually. Um, think about the phrase innocent until proven guilty. So we're saying that somebody's innocent unless we prove something else. So innocent would be, um, or the defendant is innocent, would be our null hypothesis. And similarly, the whole idea that the defendant is guilty, you know, unless we prove the defendant is guilty, that must be the alternative hypothesis. And this is what the prosecutor is attempting to prove. So if there's enough evidence to disprove that the, the defendant's innocence, 
we'll say the person's guilty. Otherwise, even if even if we don't think he's innocent, but we haven't proven his guilt, we'll act as like we'll we'll treat it as if he was innocent. So thinking about it, in a trial, there's actually four possible results. There's two possible states of nature, or in other words, two possible actual truths about the defendant. In other words, the defendant's either innocent or guilty. And as far as our conclusions go, our conclusions are either going to be not guilty or guilty. Notice that it doesn't say innocent or guilty. It says not guilty or guilty in terms of the verdict. And the reason being is because we're not actually going to try to prove someone's innocence. We're just going to try to prove their guilt. And if we fail to prove their guilt, then we just say they're not guilty. In other words, we might think they're still guilty, but we haven't proven that they're not. All right. Um, so if somebody is innocent and we find them not guilty, we did a good thing. Right? Check. We did good because we don't want to put innocent people away. Similarly, if somebody is guilty and we find them guilty, that's also a good thing. If they're innocent and we find them guilty, well, that's bad, right? That's really bad because we just put an innocent person away. Similarly, if they're guilty and we find them not guilty, that's also bad. Um, most people would argue that's not quite as bad as putting an innocent person away, but finding a guilty person not guilty just means that we might have let someone get away with murder, so that's not good either. And again, as I said, if they're guilty and we find them guilty, that's good too. Justice was served. Okay, uh, so this is almost identical to how we'll set up a hypothesis test, but we'll phrase it in slightly different terminology. So just to show you for reference, so we have instead of truth about the defendant, we'll talk about the truth about the null hypothesis. And then instead of verdict, we'll call that our decision. So HO, our null hypothesis, is either true or false. And our decision is either going to be to accept HO or reject HO. And I'll go, talk about this more in a moment. Okay, so if HO is true and we accept it, we did good. If HO is true and we rejected it, that's bad. We just basically contradicted the status quo and we're wrong. So you know, this is, you know, this this would be very embarrassing. If HO is false, so the default state's false, and we actually accept that false state, that's not good either. And then if HO is false and we rejected it, that's what we want to do. That's cool because somebody think, you know, the status quo thinks one thing and we've proven something different. So this is a very exciting thing, this check mark right here. This is what we're really going for when we do research. All right, but notice before when we talked about the trial, we didn't find somebody innocent. We found them not guilty. And the reason being is because we're not actually trying to prove their innocence. We're trying to prove their guilt. And if we fail to prove their guilt, we'll just go with the default state of not guilty. So we're going to do the same thing with hypothesis testing. Instead of accepting HO, since, again, we're not really proving HO, we're just failing to disprove it in this situation, instead we'll say failed to reject HO. So this is somewhat of our wishy-washy workaround to the idea that we're not, we failed to reject it instead of actually accepting it. In other words, we might still think HO is false, but we failed to prove it false. All right, kind of like finding someone not guilty. So just be careful with that wording. Okay, so there's two types of mistakes that can be made. All right, I'm just going back for a moment. Right, if HO is true and we fail to reject it, that's good. If we if HO is false and we reject it, that's good. But these two situations are bad. If HO is true and we reject it, that's embarrassing. And if HO is false and we fail to reject it, that's also not good because we're basically accept we're 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 not accepting, but we're failing to reject the status quo, even though the status quo is wrong. So both of these are mistakes, and they have names. Okay, so going back to this, again, we make the correct decision if HO is true and we fail to reject it, and we make the correct decision if HO is false and we reject it. Okay, um, so where are our mistakes? If HO is true and we reject it, so we're contradicting the status quo and we're wrong, that's called a type 1 error. And if HO is false and we fail to reject it, that's called a type 2 error. Okay, again, if you compare this to the justice system, we tend to think that the type 1 error is worse, contradicting the status quo um, when actually it's correct. That's considered worse. All right, um, let's actually link this to some probabilities. 
Um, alpha, which you saw before um, in chapter five on confidence intervals. Alpha in hypothesis testing is the probability of making this type one error. And remember the type one error occurs if we reject HO when in fact HO is true. So it's a probability of rejecting HO given that HO is true. Sometimes alpha is called the significance level. So if you hear a problem mentioned significance level, that's what they're referring to. Beta, um, just another Greek letter here. Um, you don't need to write beta. Alpha you should write in your simple dictionary, but beta you don't have to worry about. This is probably the last time we're going to talk about beta in this class. So beta is the probability of a type 2 error. It's the probability of rejecting HO when actually um, HA is true, so HO is false. Okay, so if HO is false, it's the probability that we reject HO, or fail to reject HO, I should say. All right, um, just kind of summarizing this. Um, if HO is true and we reject it, we call it alpha. If or the probability of rejecting it is called alpha. It's the probability of making a type 1 error. The probability of failing to reject HO when actually HO is false is called beta. Alpha is our choice. Alpha is really your willingness to be wrong as a re researcher. Your willingness to basically contradict the status quo and reject it and risk possibly being wrong. It's, it's your risk of being wrong here. Um, so alpha is completely your choice. Um, of course, in this class, I'll, in the homeworks and on the test, I will give you the alpha value. And in your own work, you, maybe if you work at a hospital or something or in a research lab, they might tell you what alpha values you have to use. But it's not from the data. It is something that is a choice to make. Um, 1 minus alpha would then just be the probability that you fail to reject HO if HO was actually true. Uh, similarly, 1 minus beta would be the probability you reject HO when HO is actually false. Sometimes 1 minus beta is called the power of a test. Um, so these are often, if you actually continue on um, taking more statistics classes, there'll be a lot more on this whole 1 minus beta. Okay, and um, beta is, the reason why we're not going to talk about it very much in this class is because beta is something that's unknown. It, the whole idea of HO is false. HO could be false in many, many different ways. There's not necessarily just one way in which HO is false. So um, the probability that you fail to reject it or reject it is not going to be something you're going to be able to calculate or know.